Hey guys, it's Karen. Okay, so it's about 10 o'clock at night. I've just been taking care of my dad the whole day, which um, was pretty uh, fun actually. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you really quickly before I get ready for bed about the book that I finished today and that is Survive the Night, which is the new book by Riley Sager. So I freaking love this. <laughs> just like I loved the last book I read by him, I have two more to go. Um, but this one just came out. So I'll do a quick little chat about it. It's not really so much of a review because it's just like a thriller basically. And I feel like reviews, like full reviews are better for literary fiction or nonfiction. Um, but anyway, um, so this book basically just to give you some background information follows this girl, um, named Charlie and Charlie is a young adult ish this takes place in the 90s um she's in college and she kind of has a hot mess of a life like uh she has a lot of early or not really early childhood trauma but just like childhood trauma girl i can relate i can relate to her so hard because the other thing that's true about her is she is quite a bit of an introvert and um is very kind of sensitive I guess as far as um I guess the kind of situations she's in like she does not want to be up late at night when she's a class the next day and stuff like that um now to kind of deal with her childhood trauma and kind of find her niche I guess um she is really into film and so Basically, one of the big parts of the story is that um, she has a film class early the next day, but her roommate at college, her name is Morgan, no, Maddie, I think it's Maddie, um, convinces her to go out at night. Now, Maddie reminds me of so many people, uh, mainly a boss I recently have, which don't appreciate who you are as an introvert and don't accept you for the different things that have gone on in your life and that have made you into the person you are now and is her friend, but constantly trying to change her, which I experienced a year or two ago when I had a boss who would only talk to me when the night before I had been out with a guy and, um, Whenever I would talk about books, she kind of was really condescending, which is really unfortunate because I feel like if you are a parent and you go to a parent-teacher conferences, they're always pushing your kid to read. That's like the number one tip that teachers give to parents. And yet, how many teachers can model reading? Me, I can, but then I always get put down for it. But regardless, let's get back to the characters of this book. Um, so basically Maddie is trying to be her friend, but she wants to change her. She doesn't appreciate who she is as an introvert. She thinks she's too into film. She needs to be more into real life. She needs to go out more. She needs to date, all this stuff. And yeah. So I'm definitely team Charlie, um, who's the main character. I don't know if I said that. It is 10 p.m. at night. Um, anyway, um, and Charlie decides, okay, okay, I will go to the bar with you, whatever, even though she doesn't really want to go out. And so she goes out for a little bit, but then Maddie just kind of takes off and does her own thing and kind of completely ditches Charlie. And like really the only reason she wants Charlie there is because she doesn't want to walk, a ho walk home alone at night. Um, and so finally Charlie is like, I'm leaving. And like her friend Maddie apologizes. She's like, I will stay with you the rest of the night. And like, um, Charlie would have like definitely listened to that and forgiven her friend, except her friend turned it back again to be all about her and just said, you know, I'm just scared to walk home at night. That's like basically why she invited her. And she pretty much admits that. And so Charlie basically is like, F off. I'm going home now do you want to come with me or do you want to stay? Right. I don't really feel like she ditched her friend Maddie because she gave her the choice. Like you can come home. Like I'm going, I'm happy to walk with you, but you have to leave now. And Maddie decides, no, she doesn't want to go home yet. And so Charlie leaves. Um, well, the next day Maddie is nowhere to be seen and it ends up, um, within a couple days they find, 
her purse um, in the field somewhere because it was really sparkly and right next to it is her body and so she was murdered. Um, and that's just kind of background information starting the book. That's not necessarily what the book is about but more like just so you know what Charlie has been through. So this book starts a little bit after that murder and Charlie is just trying to like get the heck out of this college. Like she has basically so many people telling her that it's her fault that her friend was murdered, that she shouldn't have left her, um, you know, when Maddie could have gone with her anyway. Um, and yeah, she just, she just feels like she totally got blamed for what happened and because all the people are blaming her or maybe in spite of the people blaming her, I don't know, but she, she also feels a uh, regret and a bit of guilt when really, it really wasn't her fault. Um, so anyway, she just kind of wants to get the heck out of that college campus and the sooner the better. So because it's the nineties, she posts this like thing on this ride board place where you can post if you want to either give a ride to someone else who's willing to go with you and split the gas money or you um, want a ride somewhere and again that would be the opposite part of that equation anyway um, so she finds this guy who is going like really close to where she's going and so they decide to split the ride and so basically this whole book is like their trip on the way to this place and Charlie is just a hot mess because of her trauma. She's already triggered like by basically everything, by what just happened to her roommate, by the guilt from that, by all this stuff. And then she's in the car with a strange guy who is being super, super shady. And so the whole book just has this huge level of tension because um, Charlie isn't probably the most reliable narrator. Like you have a sense that you don't know if you should trust her or not because throughout this there's kind of like these movies that play in her head which is kind of related to her trauma um and at the same time the driver is super shady and she's just like alone with him in a car like super vulnerable and so just all this stuff is happening you're like you don't know if you should just trust the trust charlie should you trust this guy who's clearly lying or what the heck and then you get to the end not not the very end but close to the end and i'm like holy shit <laughs> there are about mm, probably only about two but like fifty thousand twists and like what the heck and it was so good um, so I wasn't sure if I should give it four stars or five stars. Um, like Sarah from Your True Shelf mentions that she rates it on her enjoyment. So if I was going to give the uh, stars based on my enjoyment, I would definitely give it five stars. I also think that Riley Saker's ability to like have you kind of confused the whole time because of all the tension and because of not knowing who to trust was super super uh talented and really amazing writing but this isn't anything life-changing or deeply profound and so that's the one thing that like makes me not want to give it five stars because i feel like five stars is reserved for like literary fiction or something so i guess as a thriller i would definitely give it five stars maybe overall like 4.5 i don't know Reading is just a weird thing. I should do a video on that later about my feelings. I know other people have done videos about that as well, but I definitely, definitely love this. I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. And yeah, overall it's a good day with my dad. He is doing so, so much better. Like it was almost to the point where I didn't even think that I was going to be able to stay with him today because he was doing so poorly and it's just like literally every day it's just like so much better than the day before and yeah today he only took like one nap the whole day uh yeah what else did we do together i read well he watched tv and he kept making comments at me like as if i was watching this show with him uh totally than that i was reading a book and then we watched The Conjuring together, which is why he did not sleep. He was like, 
if you put it in a movie, I'll probably just fall asleep. And I said, okay. And then he was awake the whole time. And then my brother and sister-in-law came over. We had pizza and there was basically time um, for my mom to get home. She got home. I left. I worked really quickly and then I came home. So that's that. It was amazing to be able to have like an entire day where like, I couldn't really leave the house to go do anything else and so I was kind of like in this cozy spot where pretty much the only thing I could do was read or play on my phone or watch TV or work out in the basement which I did for a little bit but I was also scared to leave my dad because he's kind of a fall risk and I didn't want him to be upstairs while I was downstairs anyway this book is good that's the summary and I hope you guys read it at some point if you have already read it let me know what you thought about it and also let me know if you plan to read it because it's so good. All right. Bye, guys.